Okay, we are live on YouTube now, thank you. Right, good afternoon and uh, a warm welcome to uh, this afternoon's Rushcliffe Borough Council Planning Committee, quite literally, uh, and welcome to our visitors as well. Uh, I'm Councillor Richard Butler, I'm the Chairman of the Committee, and with me today uh, we have Councillor Mrs Stockwood, who is my Vice Chairman, Councillors Bailey, Clark, Healy, Jones, uh, Gowland, who has uh, substituting uh, Murray, Mason, Purdue, Horan, Shaw, and, uh, and Councillor Galvin, as I mentioned, and officers, I have uh, Mr Ashcroft, who is the planning services consultant, and Mrs Dodd, who is the team or is a team manager for planning, and Mrs Sells, the borough solicitor, and Mrs Coop, who is our, um, uh, our uh, democratic services officer. So welcome, everyone. Um, as we've got visitors here, I better just mention the, some health and safety. Uh, we're not expecting any fire alarms to go off uh, if, if, if they do, then the doors are there or at the back, and uh, but rest assured, you, we'll, we'll try and leave the building as well, so if you just follow us, but hopefully that uh, won't be necessary. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's that. So uh, do we have any apologies for absence and substitute members, please? Yes, Chair, we have apologies from Councillor Walker. Councillor Bansall, Councillor Price, and Councillor Thomas. We just have three substitutes today. We've got Councillor Gowland, Councillor Jones, and Councillor Shaw. Uh, Councillor Murray's not actually here. Thank you. Uh, right. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out. It was because I was I was reading the, the uh, from the name badges and where I'm sitting. So uh, so thank you for that. And uh, uh, item two is: uh, Do we have any declarations of interest uh, under the code of conduct and or under the planning code? Does anyone wish to declare anything? I suspect not, but no, nothing to declare. Thank you. And uh, can I also just confirm, colleagues, that you've all received the the uh, document, the late representations and updates to reports. Everyone's received those. Yeah, good. Thank you. So um, the uh, minutes of the previous meeting, which was or, or the previous standard planning committee meeting, which was held on the 14th of July, for those of us present, are we happy for me to sign these as correct? Thank you. Right, so... Um, we move into today's planning applications. Now, we've got a couple of little changes uh, just to let you know about here. Uh, the first item on the agenda, Mount Sorrel Drive, that is not going to be discussed today and uh, because of uh, further information has come to light, which wasn't quite ready for, for a committee. So that will come to uh, uh, no doubt a future committee. And uh, which leaves us with three planning applications today. Uh, I'm conscious of the fact that we, our visitors, I think, are here for one particular application. So, so that uh, you, uh, our visitors don't have to sit through uh, other applications, I'm proposing to change the order of the agenda. And so the first application we'll discuss today will be the RAF Newton uh, application. And uh, this is, so that's it's in a different order on your agenda. So this is the former RAF Newton Aerodrome, Wellington Avenue, Newton. It's a variation of condition 34 to uh, planning permission uh, given, or previous planning permission uh, reference number 19 stroke 01871 stroke VAR. And this is to increase hours for deliveries to and distribution <coughs> associated with existing V8 uses for hangars one to five, including plants and associated equipment. And uh, so, Mrs. Dodd, you're going to talk us through this one, aren't you? So, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Just waiting for the presentation. Right, thank you, Chairman. Sorry for the whistle stop tour of the borough there. 
The first application, as we say, is the former RAF Newton Aerodrome. Um, members will have received the late representations. Um, I would just ask you to in particular note the um, hours calculation and the change to condition 34, which is just a correction of that condition to accurately reflect the proposed change to the hours of operation, which are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Friday and 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday. So members might be familiar with the RAF Newton site. It's one of our strategic allocations and the land was removed from the green belt when the core strategy was adopted in 2014. So it is an allocated housing site. Um, so if, by way of context, you've got the A46 running along the east of the site up to the Margidernum roundabout. And this is where the access is gained. Um, there's a loop uh, link road that runs down this way in parallel to the A46 and then through the site. Um, there is an existing access via Wellington Avenue into the um, existing um, Newton village. And then there's a, a sort of main access through the new proposed housing site, some of which has been built out. Sorry, Councillor Jones, let me move it a bit closer. There we go. Let's try again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be uh, a little bit louder. Sorry, so I was just taking you through through the site and, and the environment and where the link road runs, um, access, main access road through the site, as well as a spur off down Wellington Avenue, which takes you into the um, existing older village part, part of the village. So just by way of context, this is that link road that takes you off the uh, the roundabout through down to Newton. And you can see the um, advertisements there for the Red Row housing site that's being built at the moment. And some further photographs just to show you the context of where the, the, uh, the road goes at the moment and where the um, heavy goods vehicles would travel. And then we get to the housing development at Newton, you can see, as I say, some of the houses are already built and, and occupied, and you can see the hangars that this application relates to in the distance there. A little bit more of the context and through, so um, through the, the housing estate along, this is the main, main link road to the hangars. Hangars here in the background, you can see it's very much still an active building site, uh, building out the remaining housing. My understanding is that all the hangars are currently occupied at full capacity. And this is looking back towards the housing from the hangars. So it just gives you an idea of the context of how um, the proximity of the housing to the, the, uh, the hangars there. And then just for further context, Chairman, I've got some photographs here of Wellington Avenue, which is the other access route that can be used, used through. Um, it does have signage, to indicate there should be no right turn for construction traffic and that is set out in the construction management plan for the housing part of the site and there all is also signage um, restricting the use for HGVs and directing HGVs really to use that main um, link road that we saw earlier rather than going through Wellington Avenue. By way of plans, I've just got the master plan up here that shows you how Newton is proposed to be developed. So the, the hangars are uh, at this um, western part of the site and they're the existing hangars that are now in a V8 use. And then the housing development of these areas here. So we've got some of the housing from Red Row in, the, in this area here. There's quite a lot still to be developed. And then down in this um, eastern, southeastern part of the site, we've just recently um, received another planning application for commercial development and that's referred to in your late representations but that is uh, only just valid so we haven't got any representations in about that one yet to share with you. Uh, nonetheless that just gives you a bit of an overview um, of the site. So as I say as part of the original outline the hangars were conditioned that they should be used between the hours um, of eight and six Monday to Friday and nine till one on a Saturday. And that's for delivery and distribution to and from those hangars. The proposed hours are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Friday and 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on a Saturday with no working on bank holidays or Sundays. That's an additional 14 hours spread over the week. Um, we haven't received any objections from the Highway Authority. They based their comments on 
the hangers remaining of the same square meterage, so the same amount of use, but the vehicle movements being spread over those additional hours rather than any increase in vehicle use. Environmental health officers um, asked for submission of a noise report to look at the impacts at the hangars of issues such as loading and unloading in those additional hours and were satisfied with that report. However, ward members, the parish, neighbouring parishes and a number of residents are concerned about the increased times of vehicle movements and the associated noise, disturbance, pollution, <coughs> community safety and change to the character of the area. So this is really a question of amenity impacts. As I say, the Highways Authority have no objection. There's no highway safety implication. There's no issue about capacity on the network. It's about weighing those impacts on those, those residents along that link road um, in terms of their, their uh, amenity being affected by the additional hours and balancing this against any economic um, benefits of allowing those additional hours for distribution and delivery. So, as I say, following negotiation, officers are satisfied that on balance, the proposed revised hours and distribution of seven till seven Monday to Friday and eight till four on Saturday would achieve a satisfactory compromise. And we have therefore recommended approval, Chairman, subject to the matters in the late representations around the recommendation and in particular that change to condition 34. Um, uh, rectifying the hours for a Saturday um, and the signing of a variation to the original Section 106 agreement just to link it into the correct permission. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mrs Dodd. Um, now, we have two speakers for this item from uh, who are both uh, speaking against the uh, application uh, from the public. Uh, well, one member of the public and also the ward member. Uh, so, Sarah Shaw, are you here? So, if you'd like to come to the table there. And you have up to five minutes to... Uh, speak to us. Uh, if you're still speaking at four and a half minutes, we'll tell you when it's 30 seconds left. And as soon as you're ready, press the right hand button and the red light will come on and you can uh, address us. Thank you. Good afternoon. Firstly, I'd like to thank the committee for allowing me to speak today. Newton Parish Council do feel it is unfair to residents to hold such an important meeting at 2.30 on a weekday and in the middle of school holidays making it difficult for residents to attend. As you will be aware, 178 residents have objected, showing how strongly they feel about the increase in operating hours. I would like to draw to your attention, the first of the noise monitoring assessment was completed on a Sunday between 10 a.m. and 12 noon when no hangers were operational. This is therefore not a true reflection of the proposed operational hours being applied for. The monitoring undertaken on a Thursday and Friday was obtained outside the approved working hours for hangers between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. on a Thursday and 6.30 a.m. and 8 a.m. on a Friday. And this therefore does not represent the noise levels expected from the proposed operational hours. There were no decibel levels taken as a HGV goes past properties, but based on Enzygo's own report, it states, and I quote, HGVs from pavement is 90 decibels, very loud. The final section of this report also measures values, outcomes and assumptions are subject to a margin of uncertainty. Residents will have to live with these assumptions and the certainty of HGVs going past their homes. There are parts within the National Planning Policy Framework about sustainable development. Sustainable, there is no evidence to show without the increased hours, the businesses are not sustainable. Economic, there is no evidence to show the businesses will become uneconomic without the increased hours. Social, extending the hours is antisocial to family life, potential increase of safety to the residents of Newton and environmental has an impact on the residents, especially those who live on Newton Lane, Firefly Close and when Hunters Road is complete, HGVs will also use this route, which is shown as a principal road in the design and access statement. There is also an exit for HGVs from hangars of Varsity Grove. It is our belief that highway safety, traffic and parking issues, noise, dust, fumes, etc. all impact on the community. 
In the officer's recommendations, there is a letter from Jamie Lewis of Howard Cole. It states, the origins of Condition 34 to a time where Wellington Avenue was the only access site and was necessary to protect, protect the residential amenity of those living on Wellington Avenue. We would question why the same consideration will not be given to the additional 32, 132 homes, should I say, that will people will be living in those properties and will be much closer to HGV accessing. It is the view of our residents that the proposed extension to the operating hours represents a considerable risk to the safety of children living in Newton and indeed the children of future residents. We would also like to stress that at Newton Parish Council, we are representing those future residents who are yet to move into the area and therefore currently don't have a voice. HGV still tried to access the hangars via Wellington Avenue despite the signage, and this is due in part to the removal of bus gate. We will bring to Council's attention that the current hours are not being adhered to, and we have reports that HGVs are currently accessing hammers, hangers at 7am in the morning until 10pm at night, and we would therefore ask how would this be policed? And I would also like to add, after seeing the photographs that you've put on today, they are completely misrepresenting how close the houses will be and are to that road accessing Newton, not only on Wellington Avenue, but, but the, the way in which that's been photographed is completely um, wrong. And I will ask, please, that you do consider refusing this application. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you just turn the button? Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, well within time, so thank you. And our uh, <coughs> second speaker on this is the Ward, Ward Councillor, Councillor Sims. Again, you've got up to five minutes if you need it. Say that again, sorry? Uh, you, you've got up to five minutes to address. Okay, no problem. Hello, colleagues. Good afternoon. David Sims, as you know, Ward Councillor for the East Bridgeford Ward, and Newton falls into that. Um, I'm going to take a very pragmatic rather than read, to, read a speech on this. This is a, a that road in front of you is an arterial road that runs through potentially a thousand houses. It's the artery of a thousand houses. Then there's Wellington Avenue, which is another arterial road which runs between another 400 houses. So a thousand houses. So thousand houses. Conservatively, a thousand kids. Um, each hour that that HGVs run between the hangars at the top and the planned distribution centre that hasn't been uh, ratified yet, but business park at the moment, there is going to be a, a relationship between those two things. Each time a HGV truck runs, that increased risk to children and residents in the area. Now Newton is constantly being uh, bombarded with measures to to get bigger, which is which is great. We say, and as a council, this is the first garden village in the, in the ward. This is great, but we're running an arterial road through two business parks potentially. The environmental impact of that, the diesel, the fumes. I walk along there. I, I live in Newton. I walk along there. The lorry drivers are great. They give us a big wide berth when when I'm walking the dogs and things like that but most lorry drivers, but there's, there's the odd ones that come piling through, and it's certainly not 20 miles an hour because that's a very straight road. I'd, I'd say that really, really, if we allow this erosion on, on, on what we've put in place in the past to continue, I have other business parks at East Bridgeford. There's business parks at Bingham. Uh, when do they say, right, well, the precedent's been set now. Let's erode it away a bit more. And I think we really need to understand about stakeholders. Everybody should be a stakeholder, a community stakeholder. The people, 178 applications, uh, objections to this. And I would strongly advise that we think about not just the people of Newton, but the people of Rushcliffe and how business interacts with people. of uh, Business is great. We need business. We need jobs and things. But to put in, in a garden village, a rural garden village, extended hours, I don't believe is necessary. And I would urge you to object to this and, and, and let Newton carry on evolving and the community of Newton have cohesion. 
rather than lorries, 44 tonne lorries, 44 tonnes of lorries trundling through their village through extended hours. And the, the amount of traffic that will go from the distribution centre to that, those hangers is going to be great. They, we allowed them to chop 197 trees down. They were 100 years old and they chopped even more down than that. It is not right that we subject the people of Newton to this all the time. It's constant, constant, constant. And I keep on saying this has implications for the wider Rushcliffe community. So I would urge our colleagues to throw this out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, well within time. So uh, thank you, Councillor Sims. So we, we've heard from uh, Sarah and uh, Councillor Sims with their concerns and objections, noise in particular and safety for children, well, not just children, but safety in general <laughs> and, uh, and the noise and also reference to the gar uh, garden village idea. But um, so would you like to come back on any of those points, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just wanted to clarify um, some of the points um, raised by the parish councillor in terms of the noise report. So um, in terms of when those um, surveys were carried out, the original application sought um, hours of operation on a Sunday and earlier in the morning. So I think that might go some way to explain why there's those surveys taking place at those times as well. Um, and then I would just draw members' attention to paragraph 59 onwards of the report, which explains regarding the noise assessment that the noise assessment relates to operations at the hangars, loading and unloading, and that the methodology doesn't um, account for noise associated with vehicle movement. Um, it is a public highway and we can't prevent people or vehicles from using using the highway as such. Um, so that just explains that in a bit more detail from paragraph 59 onward for a bit of clarity on how the noise impact report has been put together and what our environmental health officers are assessing it on. Um, but that was it. Thank you, uh, Councillor. <coughs> Thank you very much. Right, we, we now need to discuss and debate and decide. And uh, I've already got an indication from Councillor Clark uh, wishing to speak and then uh, Councillor Jones. So Councillor Clark, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a very difficult uh, application because it really illustrates sort of constant uh, biting away at a cherry and uh, adding a bit more on to, to things. And you've heard the uh, passionate uh, contributions from both the Parish Council Chairman and the, the Ward Member. Uh, just before I get into the main body of it, can I just ask? Um, the officers, why there are the 42 conditions uh, shown again, which don't relate in any way to hours of operation of the hangars. Um, I, I'm, I would say in passing, I'm very pleased to say that one of the conditions relates to the provision of a new primary school, uh, which I'm very pleased to see. Uh, but uh, my main question is, why aren't the conditions restricted to the application, which is a variation of hours of operation? Well, I'm glad you noticed that, Councillor Clark, because it, well, it... there are about 150 it, yes, pages on it, so, uh, it. It does make, for what, for what's on the face of it, is a relatively straightforward request to change a condition. It's a very, very thick report with all the original conditions of the original application. Uh, there is a legal and technical reason for, for this. Where it's not been done simply because people like printing out lots of reports. It's, I think it's, we probably have no choice to do this. But could you, Mrs. Dodd, just explain uh, the reason that we've got? In effect, it looks like we've got the whole application in front of us again, but we haven't. But. Yes, effectively, it's a variation of the original outline back in 2010. So because that was the outline for the entire site, and this was one of the conditions on that original outline, you are effectively <coughs> granting permission for that whole scheme all over again. But you're quite right. You, the only bit you need to consider is that change. But effectively, this variation of condition replaces that permission. Um, and that's why we need a deed of variation for the Section 106 as well, because that will then tie into this permission. So, yes, we have lots of conditions associated with it to make sure it all ties together. So, Councillor Clark. Although there are a lot of conditions in here, we're just looking at number 34. Does that help? 
I knew that would be the answer, Mr. Chairman, but I thought I'd just uh, ask the question anyway. Uh, because they, so it is a, the report is a bit repetitive. It mentions things twice, if not sometimes th three times. Anyway, on to the variation of the hours of operation, which concern me uh, greatly. Uh, the report has stated, and so somebody made a comment, that the hours of operation will not increase necessarily, in theory, the number of vehicles that are operating. They're spreading them, you know, in which case you could argue, so why? Uh, why not keep it focused to within what I would call traditional working hours? Because I think the main point here and the point that's been made is that this is the main access road through a housing estate. It doesn't matter whether you go via Wellington Avenue, which you can't at the moment, uh, or whether you go via Newton Gardens, which is the, the road that, although it's got 20 and a Randall painted on it, that's just the developers have put it there. It doesn't have any legal standing of any sort. Uh, it's just the developers trying to slow people down. Um, so my issue is that by increasing the hours beyond what they already have permission for, merely increases the potential danger to residents. Um, okay, we tend to focus on children when we're talking in, in these terms, but it could relate to anybody uh, who is potentially close to the road. So we have the safety of the residents, which I'm concerned about, and then we have the noise, nuisance, dust and pollution, uh, etc., which every time a vehicle goes past, especially in today's weather, it will be extremely dusty. And so there's bound to be a cloud of dust come off the uh, tires of the trucks when uh, when they go past. But even if it wasn't dusty, you've still got that noise, nuisance, pollution further into the evening when you would hope that children, uh, if it wasn't absolutely pouring the rain or whatever, uh, were hopefully out enjoying whatever they want to do uh, in terms of playing sport, playing with their friends, um, whatever, just enjoying the garden. So I really do have um, considerable concerns about this. Uh, the There was there seems to be a lot of emphasis put on Wellington Avenue um, and hopefully we will end up in time with an HGV restriction, a, a formal restriction on that. But it, it's not just Wellington Avenue, it's this road that you can see at the moment which is Newton Gardens, which is the main arterial road that comes off the roundabout of the A46 and carries uh, the majority of the HGV traffic. So I really cannot see the justification for this variation because a comment is made somewhere, which uh, I think it was from the highways, uh, uh, that... Um, Oh, here we go. Paragraph 52. Uh, highway officer also clarified when assessing the impact. They assume the hours are unrestricted. So theoretically, from our standpoint, the applicants could always have worked within the newly proposed hours in any case. So are they trying to say that it could be operated 24 hours anyway? I just don't believe that. Uh, what I really need to emphasize is I think that this will be unnecessary additional uh, nuisance to the residents of Newton, wherever they are, whether they're in the new houses that are on the left, and not all of them are occupied, but that's irrelevant. They have planning permission. They will be occupied in the space of the next year, two or three, uh, as well as the existing residents on the right-hand side and further beyond as well. So I can't support this uh, uh, proposal. Um, and so I'm going to propose that uh, we refuse it on the grounds that, uh, and I'll just preface this again, the sustainable development. 
and I think that's a, a good argument that was made by the parish council chairman. It's not going to, if they are claiming that it's not, they're not trying to increase the number of vehicles, they just want to spread them. Therefore, it's not going to affect the sustainability of their business because they've still got the same number of vehicles operating. So why not operate them within, as I say, what I call traditional working hours? So, as I say, I think we should refuse this on the grounds that it will create unsustainable development by virtue of unnecessary noise, nuisance, dust and pollution impacting on neighbouring residential properties. Uh, two, unacceptable increase of HGV traffic outside of traditional normal working hours, increasing the danger to residents and especially children in the area. And three, will have a negative impact on the community amenity for residents wishing to enjoy a peaceful weekend, namely Saturday afternoons. Uh, and just to qualify that, I'm pleased that there was the negotiation to uh, cancel off the Sunday and the bank holidays and the reduction during the actual working day, but those reductions aren't enough. And I think that Saturday mornings is perfectly reasonable and uh, to have it into the Saturday afternoon when, again, families want to be enjoying their family life uh, in these houses that are right next to this road, uh, I think is wholly unacceptable. And I think uh, a timing of something like 1 p.m. would have been uh, uh, quite sufficient. So for those reasons, uh, Chairman, I am proposing refusal. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Clark. That's very clear. Um, I know there's other speakers, but at this stage, do you have a seconder for your uh, proposal? Uh, uh, Councillor Mason, uh, do you want to say anything at this stage? Or, no, and I know you're struggling with your throat anyway, aren't you? So we'll, we'll hold that there for the moment because I've got at least two other speakers who have asked to speak. Uh, Councillor Jones, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> uh, I'm with Councillor Clark in this, I think. Uh, more in general about the immunity of residents than anything else. But I've got a number of questions, which is in condition 29, there's a site wide travel coordinator. Who are they? Where are they? And what they said and why aren't they in the report? Num number two, if you look at the outline um, plan, wh where's the location of the proposed primary school? I've got a few other points to raise, but I'll stick with those for now. So we just need to find where the location of the primary school is due to be. And the question about... The, the, <laughs> and just a query about the travel plan coordinator. How would that, how is that going to work? But, uh, so have you got those... Uh, well, Yes, so the, the primary school is proposed at the, the top of the site up here um, on the master plan. Travel plan coordinator, we have had a look, we have partially discharged that condition, but I haven't unfortunately got the, the details of the travel plan coordinator today. Travel plan hasn't, coordinator hasn't been consulted. Um, the travel plan coordinator looks at the sustainable transport initiatives um, and ways of providing those sustainable options and wouldn't necessarily be a statutory consultee on an issue such as um, opening hours of a of a business or commercial use such as this. Um, I don't know if Mr Ashcroft wanted to add anything on that one. Or would, would you like to add anything to, to that? Chairman, other than really to say that inevitably um, the traffic coordinator is there because the condition requires mm -hmm. a person of that nature to provide the information through to the local planning authority. Um, as you've already been advised, that person wouldn't necessarily have a role in commenting on this planning application, nor would we necessarily seek their views on it, because inevitably we're guided either by local residents or by the statutory bodies such as the highway authority. Thank you, Jim. OK, thank you. Does that help, Councillor Jones? Not really, because I think it's wishy-washy. OK. Um, to be frank, 
because we often see that as a condition in, in applications and we rarely see the implementation of that condition. And it just seems a bit striking to me in an issue which is largely about travel on, a, on, a, on this area, not, not, not to know who, they, who that person is and what their view is. Because if they are coordinating travel, it, it seems pretty fundamental to me. But either that or we're, we're passing Mickey Mouse conditions with no teeth. Um, we'll, we'll try not to call them uh, Mickey Mouse conditions with no teeth. Oh, right. I, I do get, but I understand completely what I'm you're saying about I'm, people need to know who such a person is and, yeah. and who, who and how it works. Yeah, and that's I'm, I'm, being blunt. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. being over blunt. So the, the primary school site is at the top, uh, the, the top of that patch beyond, beyond the um, the hangers. Is, am I understanding that right? Right up there. Mm. Okay. Mm. And and our houses proposed on both sides of the of the of the, the road that the lorry should go down. Okay. Mm. So the extended hours in winter will increase the lorry movements in the dark. And on that basis, I, I, I'm, a, I'm opposed to that because uh, there's a lot of people going to move across that estate. So you just want clarification of how this is going to be built on the, both sides of the of the road? And well, it looks like I, I can I see that. It, it looks like it will, but <clears> outline we'll, just, we'll just get clarification on that. Yes, sorry. So the road, um, if I can indicate with my mouse, comes through this area here. It carries straight onto the hangars and then it goes up. So there was housing proposed in this area, and this is where some of the housing has already been built that you've you've just seen on your screen. So yes, the housing on both sides of, of that road. Yeah. I mean, if, thank you. If it, if it was going to be a grievous uh, harm to the businesses, that you could maybe say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But <clears throat> there doesn't seem to be any evidence of that really. In fact, my other question was going to be, what, what, ev what evidence has the applicant made that they've <clears throat> tried to ensure that drivers don't arrive before eight o'clock? Because it sounds as if they do. Do we know an answer to that or, or the evidence of arriving early? Um, it would be a separate enforcement matter. I don't have the details of it to hand, I'm afraid, whether that's... Any, anything else, Councillor Jones? Well, <clears throat> if it were passed, that could have been a condition that, 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 that they're required to instruct drivers. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Councillor, uh, Councillor Gowland, please. Thank you. I just wanted to pick up on the uh, wishy-washy, toothless uh, comment. Um, I mean, this is, comes down to what we're talking about, really. We passed these conditions and, you know, this travel coordinator was probably, well, was clearly involved in trying, designed to try and uh, encourage sustainable transport. And if it's not wishy-washy and toothless, maybe it's greenwash and lip service and meaningless if we don't make it do something. So um, this comes back to the conditions. The conditions were set to protect the residents at the time and now it's being asked to change them for reasons that don't, really don't make sense to me, because although it's one road or another road, in the end, they're both residential. So um, I reject this application. OK, thank you. Uh, well, well, with regards to those wishy-washy or uh, Mickey Mouse conditions, uh, they, they are conditions in the original application. And of course, they are the type of conditions that could be subject to enforcement mm -hmm. and and uh, which is may or may not be needed, but uh, but, but your point, point is noted uh, on that. Um, right, I don't think we have any other speakers. Oh, sorry, Councillor Bailey. Bailey. Thank you, Chairman. I was interested in paragraph 55 on page 48, um, and this is where the highway officer also clarified that regards to concerns raised about highway safety, the road through development to the hangars has been designed in consideration of heavy goods vehicle usage and is considered to meet the relevant standards with regard to stopping sight distances and visibility. Bearing this in mind, because um, it is a new road and it was designed 
to comply with, with the needs of the estate. I'm just really asking how much weight can we put on the highway officer's comments on there? Is it for us to disregard them? I'm, I'm just putting this to the committee to look at because obviously the hangers have been there quite some years, many years in fact. Um, it's obviously they when they were designing this road, it was to meet the heavy goods requirements of those hangers. <coughs> so I, how much regard do we give to the highway officer's <coughs> comments on this? Please. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll get the professional answer to that, but but I would say that uh, whether it's a highways officer or any other consultee, uh, they give their professional opinion, which we as a committee or the council may or may not agree with. And it's it's at the end of the day, it's down to uh, uh, members to, uh, to 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 see what weight is given to uh, to consultation. I think I'm right in saying that, aren't I? Do you want to add anything to that, please? <laughs> Chairman, you just made exactly the point that I would have made, but plainly, it's always a matter for your judgment what weight you give to any issue. Plainly, this is an important issue because at the heart of the application is not necessarily about the capacity of the highway network. It's not about the safety of the highway network. It's not about the number of vehicle movements. It's about the extended hours with which heavy goods vehicles can uh, move within and around the site. So that that is a critical factor. And Chairman, if members are minded to go against the recommendation, hopefully you'll give me an opportunity to summarise the position and how perhaps members would want to balance that in their own. But plainly, that is a key consideration because here we're not into highway safety. We're not into highways capacity. As Councillor Clark has highlighted, we're into extended hours of operation and we're into the potential impact on peace and quiet at the weekend. Those are also yeah, material yeah. considerations yeah. and it's how you balance them. Thank you, Chairman. Thank, thank you, Mr. Ashworth. Do you just want to come in on that, Councillor? Uh, yes, Chairman, thank you. And just to clarify and uh, hopefully help Councillor Bailey and uh, uh, and uh, wow. thank uh, Mr. Ashcroft for his uh, comments as well. Uh, just to clarify, we're not talking about the suitability of the road to carry HGVs because that use is established and it would be futile to try and up because we would have no grounds to argue that case. It's about extending the use uh, and the impact. Uh, just bearing in mind that I know we are where we are, we can't change it, but just for background information, originally when it was first discussed as an outline master plan, there was going to be a separate HGV road coming around the outside, not through the centre of the housing. Now, OK, as I say, we are where we are. So I'm not there's no point in wasting time uh, debating the whys and wherefores of that. But what we can debate and what I'm really concerned about is extending that impact that already takes place legitimately why do we need to extend it any further, uh, that negative impact on the residents? Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. That's very clear. Councillor, Mrs Stockwood. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd just like to um, urge the Parish Council to take a more proactive role in um, going against the... Um, the conditions that are already set. It mentions that we have um, that, well, they, they've reported that there's various um, infringements of the of the variation uh, that exists now on the conditions. That it takes place after the hours already stated. And, um, you know, it seems to me that more signage and uh, enforcement is needed for the existing hours. Um, so I, I think that is something that I wanted to comment on at this precise time. It doesn't help particularly the um, uh, thing. But, uh, you know, I'm disappointed that it's not been complained about before if they are blatantly breaching the Chairman, can I just a point of information? Yes, that yes. The, I can assure you and reassure you that the Parish Council and other members have made regular, many 
uh, complaints about infringements of conditions and uh, all sorts of operations, etc. So uh, I'm afraid it, it has been an ongoing uh, situation for many years. So, do you want to come back on that? Yes, thank I don't you want to get into too much of a debate. I don't really want to get into too much of a debate about whether it's a parish council or, or, or anyone else reporting contraventions, because at the end of the day, we're, we're here to look at the at the, this particular condition. But anyway, come, come back on it. Yes, um, I definitely need, um, as I thought as I read this report, it needs better signage. Um, and... Um, you know, perhaps, you know, HDVs are not not unsuitable, but um, are, you know, banned from this. Or restricted. Uh, restricted on Wellington Drive. It's, um, or Avenue. Well, That's the well, point I'm trying to make. Mrs. Dodd, do you want, uh, uh, sorry, are you, who, who's coming in on this? Mrs. Dodd. I was just going to comment, um, Chairman, that, um, a traffic regulation order is proposed for Wellington Avenue yeah. to to restrict the use by HGVs. And I understand the uh, the monies, the um, Section 106 contribution from the developers has now been received for that. So the county council is now able to draw down on that. And there is also um, around eighty thousand pounds for traffic calming measures in that Section 106 agreement that we we also have received the funds for. So again, there is that that money now available for colleagues at county to draw down on and and take some more um, more measures in that area. And and that uh, those 106 agreements, that money is available irrespective of what the the decision we take this afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, right. We we've had quite a discussion on this. It is a very important application because at the end of the day, people are living and more people will be living there and it's a very great interest to the local area. So does anyone else wish to say anything or shall we make a decision on this? I think I think we probably, oh, oh Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Hells. Oh, did you want, to, did you want to come, have I forgotten to bring you in? <laughs> Sorry. Chairman, uh, maybe Mary, to me just giving a summary to members in terms of the decision that uh, you're yeah. minded to make uh, and uh, uh, well, our issues uh, arise. Uh, uh, I, I was just going to ask for, for we, we've had the uh, uh, proposal moved and seconded by Councillor Clark and Councillor Mason and then yes indeed I was going to ask for clarification, confirmation of what we're actually saying, so yes, so uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you Chairman. Um, you'll be pleased to know that I'm not going to try and convince you to come up with a different outcome to that which Councillor Clark has put forward. I think here the issue is about the decision that you make and the evidence that you have in order to make that decision. Chairman, the case I've said at the outset, there's a balance to be struck here. And when there's a balance to be struck, uh, there's different issues that between the head and the heart. And here, I think the heart is properly raising concerns about the issues that local residents have raised and the extended hours by which heavy goods vehicles can come to and from the business units. Inevitably, as always, the head needs to make the decision and the head needs to make the decision on planning policy and other material considerations. Um, any decision effectively to refuse this application wouldn't be unreasonable in the circumstances as long as members, as long as the committee could demonstrate that it had, had got the evidence in order to come to that judgment. And it's important in coming to that judgment that your, your issues are focused solely on the debate that you've had about the extended operational hours and that you distance yourselves from those issues which we discussed earlier about the capacity of the network, the condition of the network, and indeed that interplay between business and residential uses on the site as a whole. Um, Chairman, if I might highlight a few things in MPPF, and the reason why I want to go there is that that's the most recent planning policy. Um, it postdates the local plan, um, and if the applicants were minded to appeal any decision, this is where a planning inspector would go. Um, paragraph 81 of the MPPF says planning policies and decisions which you're about to make should help create the conditions in which businesses can invest, expand and adapt. Fairly matter of fact statement. The next sentence is a critical one because it starts off significant weight. 
And that's the balancing exercise that we go through. Significant weight should be placed on the need to support economic growth and productivity, taking into account both local business needs and wider opportunities for um, new investment in the area. That said, the MPPF doesn't distance itself from the amenities of local residents, um, and it'd be wrong of me not to highlight that. So paragraph 85 goes on to say planning policies and decisions should recognise that sites to meet local business and community needs in rural areas may have to be found adjacent to or beyond existing settlements and in locations that are not well served by public transport. Uh, in these circumstances, it's important to ensure that development is sensitive to its surroundings, which again members have picked up in terms of uh, local residents, and does not have an unacceptable impact on local roads and exploits opportunities to make a location more sustainable. Um, Chairman, with, with that in mind, uh, in terms of Councillor Clark's three suggested reasons for refusal, um, I think the first one, which was focusing on noise, dust and pollution, probably may not be reasonable, given that we're not talking about a change in vehicle spread throughout the day. Certainly, the extended hours beyond traditional, as it were, business hours would be a reasonable way of looking at the situation. And also the impact on community amenity and the weekends is a material consideration and one where probably an inspector, if we got to that point, might consider that the council uh, had been reasonable. So hopefully that gives you an indication in terms of the weight and the issues that members should come to. The critical thing is focusing on the key material consideration, which in this case must be and is only the extended hours of operation. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr Ashcroft. Yeah, yes, it is useful to have that uh, guidance from the MPPF, but as I'm sure, as everyone will understand, at the end of the day, we're still making a decision based on, on, on what we've read and heard and also knowledge of the area and so on and so forth. So, uh, Councillor, I'll let Councillor Jones, you want to come back, don't you? Just uh, in, in view of Mr Ashmore's comments, is, is the fact that the extended hours in winter would re in, increase re lorry movements in the dark in a, through an estate in which children and adults will want to walk? Is, is that not a consideration in, in, in the design of the estate and the, and the location of facilities? It, it would have some weight, given that in winter, clearly dark evenings arrive relatively early. I can see that extending it for that additional time would create an immediate issue. Um, given the condition of the roads, it will be difficult to conclude that it would create a safety issue. It may create an amenity issue. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Clark, you've moved your recommendation for refusal for the reasons you've given. You've heard what Mr Ashcroft says and advises about the national planning policy framework. Which do you want to come back to? Uh, to that? Uh, yeah, I'm grateful to Mr Ashcroft for uh, suggesting that I uh, add to uh, the um, reasons for refusal by virtue of clarifying uh, that the, the noise, nuisance, dust and pollution uh, as a result of the extended hours of operation because uh, Mr Ashcloth uh, told us uh, that we were talking about um, the, the actual commercial operation and the use of the road. My contention is that the extended hours does actually increase that environmental impact unnecessarily because by virtue of the fact we've also had looking for evidence had evidence in the report that these uh, extended hours are not going or lack of extended hours are not going to be detrimental to the operation or the uh, sustainability of the businesses because we've had that clarification therefore uh, I think just by clarifying, just saying that as a result of the extended hours, for me, uh, cuts it. Thank you. Probably no need to come back on that because Councillor Clark has made his point very clear. Right. I don't see any more hands going up. We've had a, a long discussion. We've heard a lot uh, of 
uh, uh, planning and legal advice as well, but I think we need to make a decision. We've got the recommendation to refuse permission for the reasons we've just discussed, uh, moved by Councillor Clark and seconded by Councillor Mason. So that's what we're about to vote on. Can I have a show of hands for those in favour of that recommendation, please? Is that nine? And anyone against? One against. And uh, so, and there's no abstentions on planning. So that's nine for one against. So uh, your recommendation to refuse permission has been approved. So permission is not granted. So um, thank you. We'll move on now. You, I, I'm, you're very welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, or if you want to uh, uh, escape. But it's, it's, uh, it's important, and, uh, and uh, as I said at the beginning of this report, there's a lot of pages to this particular report, and we've got all the, all the other conditions, but, but we were at the end of the day just talking about that one condition which uh, uh, we have just made a decision on. So thank you for that. So are we ready to move on to our next application? So the, uh, if I get the uh, change of order correct here. So this is Bingham. Uh, this is 13 Cherry Street, Bingham. It's a two-storey rear extension, conversion of carport to garage, new front porch, new rear dormer, new detached garden room and office, and alterations to the fenestration. And again, Mrs. Dodd, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so again, Chairman, we have had a late representation circulated to members on this application. So we're located in the middle of the Bingham Conservation Area. You can see the site outlined on your plan there. So this is a semi-detached um, property with a, a quite a large plot, quite an unusual shape um, plot with some extra garden there. Um, and if I just... The description of development, there's quite a few things going on with this um, property. Sorry, Chairman, because we've moved the agenda around. No, that's all right. It's, just, it's, in it's a, all uh... these pieces of paper. It's, um... <laughs> it's on there, isn't it's it? Sort of so it's a two-storey rear extension, a conversion of the carport to a garage, a new front porch, a new rear dormer, a detached garden room slash office, and alterations to the general fenestration. So you can see it there on the aerial photograph as well, and you can see the, the extent of the garden area there and the relationship with the adjoining semi-detached property um, and neighbouring properties, which um, the back of their properties on Cherry Street, um, sorry, not on Cherry Street, the back of the properties there that um, border the Cherry Street houses um, side on, they're the properties on uh, Long Acre runs along the south of your screen there. So... See here the front elevation of the property as it exists. And the proposal there is for the uh, the garage and the um, front porch. To the rear here, so we've got an existing single storey extension, which is proposed to be replaced by a two storey. And then a dormer window on top of that single storey link element that links with next door. And just taking you around the site, you can see the relationship with the attached property. The relationship with the properties on um, Long Acre, and then the rear garden of the existing property that extends um, down behind the, the neighbouring property as well. So looking to the area where the proposed garden room would be sited, and then back up the garden where you can see again the rear of the existing property with its single storey extension and the relationship with those those neighbouring properties that the rear of them back onto the side of our application site. So there's a few photographs now that the case office has taken from um, the rear garden of um, the properties in Longacre. So we can see here across the application site um, and views of the church in the background there. And then just another photograph taken from slightly further down the garden. And one from the next door property there. Again, you can just see the um, rear of our application site and its adjoining property in the distance. And then the church spire. Um, peeping above the outbuilding there. So by way of block plan, you can see the red um, areas indicate the proposed new development, which is the garden room. My mouse has disappeared, don't know where it's gone, but the garden room in the rear of the property, 
the two-storey rear extension, the rear doormat and the changes to that carport and porch along the front. And if I just show you the plans here, you can see the, the changes that are proposed. Where has my mouse gone? Yeah, yeah, apologies. Um, but you can see at the rear of the property, you've got a hipped roof, two-storey extension with white, white render on the side facing towards Longacre. Um, the rear elevation shows you um, how that would be arranged in terms of Juliet balcony and hipped roof sloping back and the small, the, the rear dormer at the uh, first floor on the single storey element. And then some floor plans showing you the additional bedroom accommodation at first floor. So we'll get those three bedrooms there. And at ground floor, additional um, family living space and a garage space. And then this is the uh, elevations and floor plans for the garden building, which is a fairly simple um, flat roof building at the, the rear there. And I've just put on there for you as well, um, Chairman, is the townscape appraisal, which is taken from the conservation area appraisal. And this just shows a little bit more clearly the relationship between the application site. Oh, we're back. There we go. Oh, no, it's gone again. Uh, you've got, is it that? Sorry, technology is not my friend today. There's a red blob within the circle, and that's that's the church, which is the church spire that you saw earlier. You've got some some purple properties along the bottom of that that black circle, and those are the properties on Longacre where we took the photographs from earlier, looking sideways over the the application site on Cherry Street. And then hopefully you can just make out those yellow lines of sight, which are the public um, viewpoints that you can see the church from between properties and through through across to the church, those um, views of the um, heritage asset, the listed building. So, Chairman, there are several elements to this proposal. I think in terms of the um, front elevation, the changes there, they're fairly straightforward um, and acceptable in terms of both amenity and design. Similarly, the rear dormer, um, Officers are satisfied that that wouldn't present any greater overlooking to neighbouring gardens than what can be seen from existing rear bedroom windows. Um, the office and garden room is a fairly small scale addition. It's fairly well obscured by existing boundary treatments and certainly not um, disproportionate to the size of the garden that we've, we've got for this plot. Um, the main concerns and objections that we've received are related to the two storey rear extension. Um, and in particular, um, the impact of that extension on, on the neighbouring properties and obscuring the views of the church. Um, now, in planning terms, there is no right to a view. We have had um, comments from our conservation officer who is satisfied there's no impact on the setting of that listed building and no harm to heritage. Um, the proposal is located 14 metres from the rear elevation of the neighbouring properties and officers are satisfied that doesn't result in any significant overbearing or overshadowing impacts. Um, there are no windows proposed to that side elevation um, that would cause significant overlooking. Um, and on this basis, Chairman, the application is before you with a recommendation to approve the proposed extensions and the garden room. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we have a speaker on this item. Uh, we just have one, one guest speaker on this, and this is uh, Angela, Angela Jackson, who is wanting to speak against it. Uh, you saw what happened. It happens you, um, as soon as you're ready to speak to us, press the right button and the light will come on and you've got up to five minutes. Yeah, it won't take long. Okay. Thank you. So I'm speaking today on behalf of my recently deceased mother, Margaret Gayton aged 82, who lived at that property, number 75 Long Acre, for the last 60 years of her life. Prior to that, she lived next door at number 77 with her parents. Number 75 was built over 130 years ago in 1882. It was formerly known as Porchester Villas. And for that time, and all that time, it's enjoyed the enviable, unobstructed outlook from both the house and the garden and the street in front of the house as well, so people coming by. And that view of St Mary's Church, which is arguably one of the best outlooks in Bingham. It's also in the heart of the old village, 
and conservation area. The close proximity and height of the proposed two-storey extension will be too dominant, overbearing, there will be a loss of light, a loss of privacy, it will be overshadowing, unduly oppressive, and will completely obstruct the beautiful outlook, not to view, it's an outlook of the church from number 75, which has been there for, as I say, 130 years. It will be replaced by a stark two-storey wall, which will give the garden a feeling of being hemmed in. The outlook is part of Bingham's history. And once that wall's put there, it'll be lost forever. When Mum found out about the proposed plans via a letter from the planning department in May, she was devastated. She was upset. She was stressed, not just for the reasons mentioned above, but also with the prospect of the noise and the prolonged disturbance which would be caused by the building works themselves, which are very close to the back garden and the house. It was my mum's express, express wish to remain living at number 75 for the rest of her life. But with the thought of losing that magical outlook caused by the excessive, dominant and overbearing proposed two-storey extension, she told us she may have to consider moving. And she was heartbroken and we found it extremely upsetting to see her so sad. Tragically, my mum passed away very unexpectedly on the 19th of June. 19 days after learning about the proposed planning application. The cause of her death being a fatal heart attack. She has no previous history of heart disease. And our family agree that the proposed planning extension application contributed in part, if not in whole, to the mum's sudden death. It caused her so much anxiety and we witnessed both her mental and physical health deteriorate in front of our eyes from the day she received the news about the planning application. Mum was being and born and bred and very popular and a well-known character, loved by everybody, as evidenced by the number of people who attended her funeral. And for 82 years, she supported and was supported by the community of Bingham where she lives. If you ever have the chance to visit 13 Cherry Street, you will see that there is ample land at the front of the property, ample land. It's unbelievable. And at the back of the property to extend without detrimentally affecting other properties to such an extent. There's also ample, ex ample space sorry, at the back to have just a single storey extension. Bingham has changed considerably during my mum's lifetime. It's grown from a small village where everybody know knows each other and looked out for each other to becoming a faceless town where incomers care only about their self-interest, as is witnessed by this application which was submitted without any thought or consideration of the impact it would have on neighbouring properties, occupants, or the history and conservation of Bingham. So finally, I would once again wish to draw to the committee members' attention that the proposed two-storey extension will be excessively dominant, overbearing, overshadowing, and duly oppressive, and remove that beautiful outlook of St Mary's Church that has existed for 130 years and should be allowed to remain as part of Bingham's conservation, heritage and history. Robert Jenrick MP, the Bingham Town Council and Gareth Williams all agree with our objections. Um, and this isn't, I know the planning gentleman is probably going to say, use your head and not your heart. This is, my mum will say, this is about your head. This is history and this is conservation and heritage and an outlook. So on that basis, I'd ask you to please refuse the application. Thank you for your time. <laughs> OK, thank you. And that was bang on time as well, on your five minutes. So well done on that. So, or can you just tell, oh, you have, you have turned the microphone on. Uh, yeah, sometimes five minutes can either be very quick, seem very quick or very long. It depends. But uh, it was very clear. So thank you. So um, and we're, we're, uh, thank you for your, your uh, information. And, and, Obviously, we're genuinely sorry to hear about your 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 loss and, and your your uh, your mum and family situation. So uh, there's no other public speakers on on this item. Um, we've we've heard from uh, Mrs. Jackson about the uh, impact, in particular, on on uh, 75 Long Acre, uh, very very long established part of Bingham, and with a view to the church and uh, concerns about the 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 uh, um, being dominant uh, the proposal being dominant and overshadowing and uh and blocking the view and 
we, we, we heard it. So do, do, do you want to come back on any of this before we go into a committee discussion? I was only going to say there was another photo you asked me to display, which I was just going to put on the screen for everybody. So that that was the other one you asked me to put on. Oh, yeah. So sorry, that didn't. Uh... Yes, and I've confirmed I, we, we received that. From, well, certainly I did, and I'm sure other, other members did as well. So thank you for sending that in. Um, right. OK, colleagues. So uh, let's uh, uh, who's first on this. So Councillor Healy, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think as we know, um, this really is all about the, the impact that this two-story extension would have on two, three houses, if you like, uh, on, on uh, Long Acre itself. Um, primarily, it appears the loss of the, the view of the church spire is the main objection here, um, and understandably so. Uh, Lip's suggestions, and again, as our speaker said, suggest, well, ample room on the front of 13 uh, Cherry Street to perhaps uh, extend or the property as, as he so wishes. Um, I, I have visited um, Cherry Street and uh, Longacre, um, and I stood outside number 75, and looking down the side of the left-hand side of 75, uh, there's a full view of the church spire uh, and, and the clock. And I asked myself the question, um, would I want to lose that view? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, Councillor Healy. Um, the, the reference to ample room on Cherry Street, which was mentioned by you and, and by uh, uh, Mr Jackson as well, obviously that we have the application for what is with us before us and we can't speculate as to what may or may not come forward as a, another application in the future i'm sure i know you understand that but uh, but point well made um right uh, any other speakers on this one um uh, any other uh, i think uh, i'm sure that we will it will be pointed out to us that paragraph 27 in particular does refer to um the view and um uh, and, and that in, in the harsh world of planning, it does say that there is no right to a view, and, and, and I'm sure we'll, we'll have further clarification on this. But uh, but uh, but there we are. We are here to um, make a decision. And uh, Councillor Golan, please. Thank you. Um, I live in West Bridgeford, and there are a large number of very large extensions like this one that are getting passed. That's not to say I don't agree with you. I'm going to come to agree with you. Um, the fact it's a view of the church, I think, is probably by planning law, I suspect, by the by. But it's a very large extension, very close to the back of this other house. It will um, you know, be a big wall that they'll be looking onto. And uh, I think we should vote against this. OK, that's fine. Um, uh, um... If, if, if you are minded to say that, you just need to have a little bit of thought about reasons and so on. But I know you're thinking that uh, anyway. Uh, Councillor Jones, please. Yeah, well, I don't like it, but I'm struggling to find a planning reason to reject it. Fine, thank you. There's probably no more to say. On, uh, open to com comments about <laughs> either way. But I mean, as it stands, I can't see how we can reject it. Uh, understood completely, and yeah, and yeah, and Councillor Perdue Horan, did you indicate to speak? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it, it's a difficult one. <clears throat> As you know, I'm generally in favour of development. Uh, that's reasonable. Um, this this location is familiar to me as a, a Bingham, Bingham Councillor, Bingham Town Councillor. Uh, and I've been to look at the property and I've obviously I've looked and considered at the, 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 looked at the plans. Um, and I, I completely sympathise with the, um, you know, views expressed with regard to the view of the church. But of course, as we all know, a right to a view is not a planning matter but what i do think uh we need to consider um lending weight to is uh the 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 issue that it is in a con conservation area 
and the subjective uh, evidence of whether, in fact, it's overbearing and, and overshadowing. And, and myself, I, I accept it's 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 finely balanced, and it's a judgment you just have to come to um, without obviously um, using a slide rule. But I've come personally to the conclusion that uh, it is probably um, overbearing and overshadowing. And and whilst I fully understand uh, the, the views of um, the family, um, I look at it in, in the context of, I hope the house will be there for another hundred years and that, you know, the house will, the, the property will be enjoyed by other residents in the future. And I just think that perhaps this this particular application is a step too far uh, and crosses the line for me for overbearing and overshadowing. So if if it hasn't been proposed, Mr. Chairman, I, I would propose that we um, refuse planning permission on the, on those grounds. So just to confirm those grounds again, over overbearing, overshadowing, overbearing, in a overshadowing in a conservation area. So we've got a note of those. Um, Councillor Gilliland. Oops, can I come back? I, I go overbearing in a conservation area because it's the north, so I think not overshadowing. Okay, thank you. Um, right, Councillor Clark, please. So I'm going to just clarify a couple of things. Uh, well, firstly, overbearing, overshadowing, I was talking about of the properties, of the rear of the properties on Long Acre, or are we talking about somewhere else? Uh, but the reason I originally indicated to speak, this debate about right of, of view, uh, this isn't a view of the countryside. I just wondered if, uh, I don't know whether either of the officers can give me the technical answer because and I stand to be corrected, but my understanding was that when it comes to a grade one listed building, uh, the view is two way. And therefore it's not just the impact on a grade one listed building, it's it's the view both of the grade one listed building and from the grade one listed building. And so my supplementary question to that is then, uh, how much weight should we give to that uh, potential view both to and from a grade one listed building? Thank you. Can we can we help on that? How what the rules say about the what is the two way thing? Although I suspect you're going to tell us what the conservation officer has said in, in their response. I'm but, afraid so. Um, so, Councillor Clark, you're quite right. It's intervisibility. So yes, it does work both ways. Our conservation officers looked at that, and in paragraph 12, was concluded that there wouldn't be a harm to special interest. Um, she's taken into account the the virtue of the distance, the intervening developments, um, and has concluded there wouldn't be. Um, any harm in that sense. So uh, I would just direct you to that that comment. Thank you. Do you want to come back, Councillor? No. OK, thank you. Uh, right. Do we have any other speakers? Uh, Councillor, come on. Yes, Councillor, I'll let you come back. Yes. Uh, looking at the house next door, it looks like it's already been extended on this plan. Um, do you know if it's a two storey or one storey extension at the back of number 11? So the garden building, in effect. Well, I know that the, just that talking about overshadowing to the north. One story. Thank you. I, I think it's single, single story, yeah, okay. isn't it? Yeah. 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 Thank, you. So, yeah. thank you. So, yeah. yeah. It is. Okay, uh, uh, Mrs. Sells. Could I just, because uh, Councillor Clark moved the motion, was that your intention to to second? Okay. No, it's Councillor Perdue. Councillor Perdue, Perdue Horan moved. So, in terms of yeah. second, are you happy to second? And then you commented that you didn't agree with the overshadowing reason know. for refusal. Are you happy for that? So, the reasons for refusal is overbearing, uh, overshadowing uh, within the conservation area. Oh, yeah, overbearing and overshadowing in the conservation area. I just check officers are happy with those 
reasons for refusal. So can I just check, we're concerned about impact on number 11 Cherry Street and the properties on Longacre. So overbad, overbearing and overshadowing impacts on neighbouring properties on Cherry Street and Longacre. Would that be a good summary? Well, so is it specifically Longacre or? Uh, well, I think Mr Ashcroft's going to give us a, a little bit of assistance here. So. Uh, Chairman, thank you. If I could just invite members to have a look at the site location plan on um, page 25 for those of you in old money and page 27 those who are looking at it on an electronic basis. And you see the application site there hatched in uh, hatching on the drawings that we've got in our committee agenda. And you see property number 11, which is immediately to the north of the application site. Um, Chairman, in my judgment, um, the, the most significant impact would, by definition, be on number 11, mm -hmm. partly because it's the building immediately adjoining to number 13. Plus also, if you have a look at the scale at the bottom of yes, your map, yeah. uh, south is effectively at the bottom. So. Clearly, in the middle of the day, the sun would be to the south of number 13 and would be casting, and the extension would cast a shadow of a number 11. Plainly, all of the properties to the immediate south uh, are wouldn't directly be affected by the passage of the, of the sun. So, inevitably, it's number 11 that's most directly affected in terms of that first issue, in terms of overbearing and overshadowing. Um, could I also invite members, and it might seem an academic point, but you were talking about overbearing and overshadowing in the conservation area. It may well be that the impact on the character and the appearance of the conservation area is a separate reason for refusal rather than one that is weaved into the overbearing and the overshadowing, because they are two, two related, but ultimately two separate issues. Uh, and I just invite you to make a judgment, uh, both in terms of where is the overbearing and overshadowing impact? My suggestion to you is that it's primarily on number 11 and also whether you want a specific reason for refusal on the impact of these extensions on the character and the appearance of the conservation area. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr Ashcroft. That's, that's very helpful. And I think that this, the Council Gallery is helpful as, to you as well, I, I suspect. Um, right, Councillor Stockwood and then Councillor Bailey, please. Thank you and thank Mr Ashcroft for pointing out where North was yeah. because <laughs> the sun doesn't go round the other way. Um, the other point I wanted to make, I do remember when the conservation area as a Bingham resident was made, that much was made of the view of the church from um, what's commonly known as Warner's Paddock and the Bowls Club and everything um, that view is um, mentioned in the uh, as a, a, an asset to the view in the conservation area so though there's no right to a view it has I think substantial weight um, in this instance that um, it's not just those houses many of us respect that view as we walk along um, Long Acre and um, even from the Banks area of, of, of Bingham. So, um, as I say, no right to review, but um, it does form a, 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 an important view to many Bingham eyes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stockwood. Um, Councillor, Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Chairman. We've been told that the neighbour at number 11 would be the most affected person because of the, the protruding extension. Do we know if the neighbours at number 11 have objected to this planning application or not? Thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yes. we'll, we'll check it. It's, um... Yeah, Councillor Perry. Um, I find myself in the centre of Bingham quite regularly uh, and I don't know whether it is as a result of climate change but I've noticed recently that the sun 
actually comes around to the western side of Bingham. And, and there's been some spectacular uh, skies. And I've seen the sun quite late on coming from the west. And whilst I'm not a, a meteorologist or, 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 or physicist or whatever uh, comes into that, I would suggest that there is an overshadowing impact on property number 75, Longacre, certainly late in the day when conditions allow, which appears to be more frequent recently. So uh, with respect, yes, during the day there is impact on number 11, but uh, later on in the day, I would suggest there is overshadowing coming from the West um, later in the day. So that's my observations. Uh, but I do take fully on board the comments by Mr. Ashcroft with regard to the, um, the uh, conservation uh, area element of it. And the two are separate. Yeah. Are you happy to amend your um, reasons for refusal then? So it's two separate reasons for refusal. Yes. Yeah. And Councillor Garland's approval. Thank you. And Councillor Jones, please. Can I just ask for clarification? Because <clears throat> I can understand the concern about the two story back extension. But that appears to imply <clears throat> um, a block of, of development right up against number 11. <clears throat> Is, is is that block that's on top on top a, a, an extension or a not? Can we just explain that? Bit? Yes. So I, I think perhaps the red that red plan is a little bit unclear. But if we look on the elevations, we can see that this is this is the. Um, party wall with number 11. So this is where, where the existing building joins in and there's a dormer window on the top there. So if we go to the floor plan, um, that's your first first floor showing the bedroom, but there's already this massive building at ground floor and then it does step out to the two-storey extension. So there's this, this inset area here from the boundary. This is number 11 at the bottom of the screen here and there's this inset area and then it steps out to the the two-storey extension. On the big plan, on the outline plan, is is new construction. That the top, the, the bit at the top there. It indicates where the, where the change is. So there's a dormer window above the existing single storey there. So I think that's what the red is. That's what the red is trying to indicate. It's not a new. Um, it doesn't extend at ground floor next to the neighbour. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you. No, any help for you? Still, still look a bit mystified. Yeah. Okay. Right. Any other comments or questions, or shall we move towards a decision on this one? This is um. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, oh, sorry, Janet. Yes, we sorry. were going to ask about the, number, the yeah, neighbour. I was just going to clarify they haven't objected. No, number 11, we haven't received representations. Uh, no representations no, from number so, 11. So they didn't, didn't say yay or no then. Okay. Uh, right. Um, okay. We, well, we've got the, the alternative recommendation moved, moved by Councillor Podu Horan and seconded by Councillor Goland. Uh, for uh, to not approve the application to refuse on grounds of overbearing and overshadowing uh, in a conservation area. That's put, my simple way of putting it, and those are the main the main points, weren't they? So um, I think we need to take a decision on this. So that's what we're voting on now. Uh, show of hands, please. Those in favour of that recommendation, please show. Well, uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and those against. One, two, three, four, five. Five, five. Right, okay. Um, that's good, isn't it? So that's five, four, five against. Um, and we are a member missing, so it means that uh, I need to take a casting vote. And I think uh, having heard all the arguments for and against and having voted against, uh, uh, hmm, 
Right. I am, yeah, I'm going to cast my casting vote and I'm going to vote in favour of this revised recommendation. So to uh, basically object to the, uh, the, the application, if that's all right. If that's, is that clear? I've, so basically, I've, cha I've changed my mind. Yeah. That. yeah. So, uh, so can we just confirm then that uh, that motion has moved by Councillor uh, Perdue Horan and Councillor Goland. That alternative motion is moved and, and approved. Yeah. Okay. So permission is not. Yes. Uh, so I'm just clarifying. I'm just clarifying really. So, so basically, putting it very simply, we 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 have voted in favour of the alternative recommendation to refuse permission. So that means that permission is not granted for uh, for Cherry Street. Okay, thank you. It gets very complicated. I can. It's very complicated for your good selves. Believe you me, it's complicated for us here as well. So uh, thank you for your patience. And again, thank you for attending this afternoon. So we'll come on to our uh, final application, and uh, this is uh, Machin's Industrial Estate, Nottingham Road, Gotham. It's a change of use uh, application from from car sales to industrial use. So, um, Mr. Dodds, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so we don't have any late representations for this application and we're at the Machin's Industrial Estate in Goton. So at the northern end of Goton, um, sites surrounded on three sides by residential properties and it's an established industrial estate um, that's been there for many years. Um, access is between residential properties down this narrow driveway. I'll just show you some photographs. So you come between this, the wall of this property here and this rail fencing takes you down to the site, down through, and you can see there the edge of the industrial buildings that we're talking about. Into the site, parking area is over to the left-hand side. We've got residential properties around this side of the screen, some behind the site and some on the right-hand side here. Now this is just looking towards the parking area. And this is the edge of the unit that we're, we're considering today. And just some more views around, just showing that proximity to neighbouring properties and a bit more detail of the unit that we're considering. So I'll just go back to... So the area in question is this end unit here behind the van. Um, so I would just ask members to note there's an area that's boarded up which was... Um, uh, a flu that was in, put into the property without permission and did cause some issues with noise and odour. That's now been, been boarded up um, and there is a shared parking area, as I say, to the front. Um, so the site has historically had unrestricted hours of use. The current application proposes um, hours of use between seven and seven Monday to Saturday and 10 till three Sundays and bank holidays. So in terms of history, the um, site changed to car sales back in 2020. That business ceased and we granted planning permission last year to revert back to this industrial use with slightly shorter opening hours of eight till six Monday to Friday and 11 till three on a Saturday and no Sunday or bank holiday working. So it's similar to the RAF Newton application but unlike that application, we're looking at a small light industrial use, and that's under the new use class, EG triple I. And I'll just read out the definition of that because I think it's quite important, which is it's any industrial process which can be carried out in any residential area without causing detriment to the amenity of the area. So it's that very light industrial use that is compatible, in effect, with residential areas. Um, lots of the concerns we had through through previously from residents did relate to the flu that was inserted to this elevation that has now been been removed um, there was previously a paint spraying business operating in there but we understand there's now a business um, packing and, and dealing with Christmas decorations which is uh, doesn't require the use of an extraction flu and um, we obviously can't limit the planning permission to that particular business but we can condition um, fume extraction so that if a, a different business moves in in the future we do have a condition in there um, restricting that um, details of any fume extraction so any noise or odour can be um, controlled to the benefit of the the residents of the surrounding area um, 
so as I've said, um, there is an extant permission which has been implemented. It is already in this use. Um, the additional operating hours would be longer than those approved. Um, and careful consideration has been given to the impacts of this on the amenity of the neighbours. But given that this is that light industrial use that we've just talked about, um, and given that the rest of the site, site is for the most part unrestricted in terms of the activity and noise that can take place, um, officers don't consider it's unreasonable to allow these extensions to the opening hours. Um, and therefore, Chairman, we are recommending approval subject to those um, hours of operation set out in condition three. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we don't have any speakers obviously on this, so we can uh, go to a d discussion and uh, decision. Does anyone wish to make any points or ask any questions on this, Councillor Clark? Uh, just a quick question. Um, isn't uh, Does car sales come under a different category then? It's not I would have thought car sales is sort of light industrial itself, but it's has is that the only use that particular building's ever had? Yeah. yeah so so it wasn't in was in an industrial use until 2020, and then the it was um, a company operating on behalf of Mini, and they were an actual car sales and showroom. In, rather than a garage repairing minis, they were predominantly selling them from there, which would come into a retail sales use, which is why it required planning permission. And they've now reverted back again to an industrial use. So if it had permission before for industrial use, why do we need to go through all this again? Uh, well, that's a very good question, Councillor Clark, and, and I think it, I'm sure co colleagues will confirm, but it, I think it's primarily as a result of the comments from the local member um, concerns. Uh, he's raised concerns about uh, hours of operations and not knowing some information. I think that's right. He just raised that. concerns. He hasn't actually expressed. No, in, indeed not. But um, well, I'll tell, I'm, I'm doing all the talking. It should be you two. Yes. So. Uh, Chairman, the reason why an application is required uh, is because of the vagaries of the new use classes order and car sales is, a, is a, I wouldn't be a lawyer or a Latin expert, but a, a car sales falls into sui generis, which is uses entirely in their own rights, whereas as Mrs Dodd has explained, this use falls within the new class E class, which is the business class. And therefore, oh, you, right. and, and therefore, the use classes order is structured in such a way that you can go from certain uses to certain uses without the need permission. But in where you're doing the reverse, you do need permission. So that's why we're here. All oh, right. So, so in, in which case, Chem, yes, can I uh, propose that we uh, adopt these uh, wonderful uh, new uh, letter c categories? Uh, basically, yes, I'm moving the recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Clark, and uh, it's useful to have the 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 reason, the actual reason why it's the uh, committee in front of us. Uh, uh, just before, we, well, have you got a second for that at this stage? I know I've got speakers, but I've got Councillor Jones and Councillor Garner, but Councillor Jones had his hand up to, were you went, wanted simply to second it or to speakers? The, 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 if, if there's a user that creates a lot of noise, that, that the conditions can be reviewed. Um, yes, yes, exactly. So it's very much reliant on it complying with that use class. So if you suddenly got a, a more heavy industrial process going on in there, there would be an argument that that no longer falls within that use class. So that would be an enforcement matter or a change of use application. Is that helpful, Councillor Jones? So, so, right, so basically, Councillor Jones, you have, um, uh, I think, uh, no, it's Councillor Clark moved the recommendation and seconded by Councillor Jones. Um, and uh, Councillor Garland, did you want to come in on this at all? No? Okay. So, there's probably not a lot more to say on this one, is there? So, uh, unless, unless anyone wants to, no. So, let's go to a decision, let's go to a vote. All those, uh, uh, yes, okay, seconded by um, Councillor um, uh, Councillor Jones. So it's Councillor Clark and Councillor Jones. So if we go to decision, those in favour, please show. That's 10, that's so it's uh, no one again because there's no one else, that's unanimous. So permission is granted. So thank you very much. Uh, that was our final application for today. Uh, so thank you everybody for attending and your contributions. And thank you to 
planning officers and uh, colleagues as well. Um, we've had a couple of uh, difficult. I mean, we, we are the old expression is that we, we have to make difficult decisions sometimes, and that's what we're here for. And I think we've done that today. Uh, but I think we had a good discussion and debate on them all. And hopefully, the uh, well, we'll see what to what comes of, uh, of those decisions. But we'll close the meeting. It's ten past four. So thank you very much. Thank you.